What's up, everybody? It's Safe Home Outdoors. We're on the California Delta today. We're going to be throwing big light baits and big swim baits. Hopefully, we can trick one of these big ones to come and bite. Come on. This looks so good right now. It's a bunch of current structure. It just became incoming tide, so it's a hopefully the water movement has some stripers being active or large mob too. This is the Sneaky Peak light bait. I haven't caught one on it yet, but hopefully we break that skunk today. What do you guys look for when you're out throwing glide baits and swim baits and stuff like that? With no electronics, say you didn't have electronics, do you look for stuff? You look for current breaks, you look for grass. I like moving water and like some structure. So this was kind of perfect, but it didn't really pay off. I also like right here because it's kind of like an intersection. There's a big island in the middle right here. So it's two, two spots meeting up. A lot of water flowing too, so it's a good spot for a big fish to ambush small fish getting caught in that traffic. Let's just hope that let's just hope that theory pays off. Hey, nowadays the pain follow me. Deal with trauma probably. I don't wanna First cast with it. Oh, this is about to be a That was about as like bad as it can go. One line's still good. No scratches. All right, let's see what we can do. Oh my God. Well, I just broke the tail. the biggest idiot there is it actually doesn't swim that bad but I just broke a $40 bait oh this looks good Let's go, baby. On a six inch coal shad. Oh, yeah. Let's go, baby. No skunk. On a coal shad, too. Perfect hook set. Check that out. Perfect. Let's go. That's why we use the net. Mouth closed. Touching 18. That's barely a keeper, but that's keeper. Or you kind of over actually. Yeah. 18 and a half. Yes, sir. 18 and a half incher on a Berkeley Coach ad. Let's go. Honestly, I don't even eat fish that much, but my girlfriend's parents have been asking for fish. And my parents like eating fish too, so. I'm pretty sure that one of them would love to take it. 
and it's been a while since I brought some fish home. So, and if I do keep striper or any bass, I always keep the ones that's like barely legal. I leave all the big ones because those are the ones that's like more more likely to going to breed, and I don't want to affect the population, you know, too much. These taste better anyway. Let's go, baby. Might have found a pattern, baby. That's the second one. Might have found a pattern, baby. Six inch Berkeley Kojad, baby. It's working. This one might keep, but I'm gonna let them go anyway. That 12 pound cigar is really holding up. No abrasions at all. I think letting it sink was really important. Getting it down a little deeper and really, really slow so it stays in that strike zone. It's probably what's helping the bite out a lot. Or help that bite out a lot. I mean, it is. It is the end of December, almost January, so we gotta fish it real slow. Fish are not as active this time of year. I came over to this side just to see if uh, they were biting over at this side, like the shallow grass area too. Cause the other side is like shallow rock. And that's where I got two bites on pretty fast. So I'm gonna do like two or three more casts here. And if I don't get no bite, I'm gonna go back over to that side where the rocks are. Oh my god, if you guys see this right now, if you guys see this right now, holy sh- Bro, what are the chances? so I don't go under it but it got the line got caught on a nail on the side of the bridge and it was just hanging bro I don't know how many more times I'm gonna get lucky like this that was crazy nothing's broken too they're all still there holy crap Woo! 
All right, guys, that's going to be it. I hope you stayed around this long, and I hope you enjoyed watching me fail and break some baits, almost break my poles, but also catch two stripers. So if you enjoyed videos like this one, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.